As a long-time Linux user, I'm used to having all sorts of great open source apps available for me. But when I installed Hackintosh, I was initially just baffled by lack of cool open source apps. And I just saw how some things that I took for granted on Linux can only be done by installing a proprietary paid app that costs like 10 or sometimes 20 euros. So in this video I want to present you a list of 10 great open source apps for macOS that I personally use in no particular order. A small disclaimer, I'm not going to include very obvious picks in this list, for example, Homebrew, Macports, GIMP, LibreOffice, and so on. We all know those are great open source applications, but I feel like I will be doing a very lazy job including those apps because pretty much everyone knows these apps and probably uses them every day. So I want to focus on lesser known applications in this video. Also, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some people in the comments that would say, if you like open source apps, why don't you just use Linux, right? And trust me, I love Linux as much as you do, but some people just can't make the switch yet, and some people need some apps that only run on Mac or Windows for work. Some people might not feel comfortable enough yet to make the switch. In general, I'm not a huge fan of forcing people to do something they don't want, for example, switch to Linux, and in this video I want to focus on Mac OS. So number one in my list is an app called Music. Music is a music player, as the name suggests. It has a very clean and simple UI. It kind of resembles iTunes, but it doesn't have as much functionality. It's very simple. It only basically does one thing, plays music from a folder. It also supports scrubbing to Last.fm. So this app doesn't really have a lot of features or customization options, and this is basically my only gripe with this app. But you can also see it as a feature. It's like a very simple, very opinionated music player. And this kind of app is exactly what I'm looking for as my music player. Second in the list is VimR. VimR is basically a new Vim GUI with some extra features. It has a graphical file manager. It has built-in support for Markdown and HTML previews. It also adapts your current Vim color scheme to the whole window, which looks really awesome with Solarize schemes. So this app is great for someone who wants to use Vim, but feels more comfortable with graphical file managers or needs HTML or Markdown preview. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Next up on the list is an app called Meld. Meld is a GTK-based diff and merge tool. Meld was originally only available for Linux, but a guy called Yusup is now making Mac builds for this app. What it does is basically it lets you compare two files or folders. It shows you the differences line per line and it lets you merge those files automatically. It's a really awesome tool and it makes your life much easier, especially if you compare two similar projects with a lot of code very frequently. This app has one little flaw it's the interface. Due to the fact that it wasn't really made for Mac, some elements of interface come straight out of GTK, GNOME kind of environment. For example, there are Adwita icons in the toolbar and there are inconsistencies with file picker. For example, when you want to pick a file, it shows you a GTK file picker, but when you want to pick a folder, it shows you the native Mac OS file picker, which is kind of weird. But apart from that, I can really recommend this app. Next up, we have Lulu. Lulu is basically a free and open source firewall written in Objective-C. What Lulu does is basically what any firewall does. It lets you block outgoing or incoming connections on per app basis. And if an app is trying to make or receive a connection, Lulu is going to show you a notification and prompt you to either allow it or block it. That's as simple as it sounds. <laughs> Does this app have any problems? Well, if I'm being really picky, it's not quite as versatile as, for example, Little Snitch, which is a paid and closed source alternative. For example, it doesn't allow you to create per network rules or something like that, but that's if I'm really nitpicking. <laughs> Next app on my list is Thor. Thor is a very simple app that lets you assign shortcuts to launch applications. If you're mostly using Linux, you might take this functionality for granted as it's basically available in any modern DE or window manager. But on macOS, the shortcut functionality is kind of limited and it doesn't really let you assign any shortcut to launch any application, which might be frustrating. Thor basically adds to macOS what any Linux desktop environment has had for years. <laughs> what I'm personally using Thor for is command shift enter to launch a terminal and also I made this tiny script to toggle mute unmute microphone. macOS doesn't really have a hotkey to mute the microphone by default, so that's what I did. One more app that I want to mention is called Slow Quit Apps. But first I have to explain something to people that never used macOS. macOS distinguishes between application windows and applications themselves. So basically there are two shortcuts in macOS. Command W closes the current application window or tab. 
and command Q closes the whole application. So as you might imagine, these shortcuts can be very easily confused, especially considering the fact that they're very close on the keyboard. So what slow quit apps does is it adds a delay to your command Q shortcut so that you don't accidentally close your application. The way it works is basically you need to long press the button instead of toggle. And as you're holding the shortcut, there's going to be like a progress bar, which by the way, you can disable. The delay is also configurable. You can basically make it shorter or longer. So all in all, it's an awesome tiny tool that can save you a lot of frustration. <laughs> Next app is going to be especially useful to someone who writes in multiple languages. It's called Kawa and it's basically an improved input source switcher for macOS. So the way built-in input switcher works in Mac is kind of acceptable if you use two languages at a time. But as soon as you use three or more languages, it becomes really inconvenient to switch them. Kawa basically lets you assign shortcuts for every single input source. So let's say you have Russian, German, and English, and you want to have a shortcut for each of those input sources. And Kawa lets you do it, which I think is really awesome. And once again, it's a really small tool, but it can save you tons of frustration and just make your life that much easier. <laughs> so people that have used Mac for some time probably know about Homebrew and Mac ports which are basically package managers for macOS. However, obviously they don't work for apps that you download from Mac App Store. And this app called Mass basically provides a command line interface to Mac App Store. It lets you install, search, remove applications, basically like any package manager, which considering how much of a pain in the ass Mac App Store can sometimes be, that could be really useful for some people. <laughs> Last but not least is an app called KeyWeb. KeyWeb is a cross-platform KeyPass client, which is written in Electron. No! And I know that a lot of people might have an issue with that, but personally, as long as the app is not too resource hungry and just gets the job done, I don't really mind. And QApp certainly fulfills those requirements. <laughs> Unlike most KeyPass clients that kind of look like they come straight out of a QDA2 era, KeyWeb has a really clean and very intuitive interface. It's also very easy to navigate with a keyboard and it has all the functions that you would expect to see in a KeyPass client. For example, folders, labels, and so on. <laughs> So there you have it, that's a list of my 10 <coughs> favorite open source apps for macOS. I hope you found some useful apps for yourself. If you have a favorite open source app for macOS, which I didn't mention in this video, please let me know in the comments. I would also like to thank my patrons, Joseph O, Neurogamer, and everyone else who supports my channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.